Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about is it possible to hire a hacker? So as you might or might not know, there are various types of hackers. You have the black hats, you have the white hats and the gray hats. Uh, the black hats basically are the ones that are out there just to cause mayhem, to uh, gain money, to, uh, you know, they do this for a living. They see what they can earn, they can see who they can scheme. Uh, the white hats, they um, have the same type of skills as the black hats, but they do it for the good. So they uh, try to uh, penetrate systems and just tell the system administrators to put up certain defenses to make the systems more secure. Uh, and the gray hat is uh, in between. So he might sometimes do something that uh, is against the law and sometimes he might do something that uh, is for the greater good, so to speak. Um, if you actually are a white hat hacker, because that's what we're going to focus on today, um, you can sign up for Hacker One, uh, and that's a company that um, you can report. Um, they call it Bug Hounty. So if you if you report a bug that is maybe zero day or that hasn't been uh, acknowledged yet, you can submit submit that to Hacker One, and they will evaluate it. And if it's really uh, a vulnerability, for instance, then this this vulnerability, this piece of knowledge is is worth money. So you can earn uh, money with this. And also, when you have like a known application, let's say for instance LinkedIn or Facebook or anything, and you notice that there's a vulnerability. And you report it to Hacker One. Um, you know, uh, you can earn money not only on reporting it, but also, most preferably, also uh, giving you the solution. Um, Hacker One. So bug hunting stuff like that. Uh, do they also do pen testing? I found another company, uh, Falcon Force. And pen testing is something that's uh, that's important. So let's say, for instance, that you have a development team uh, creating a SaaS application, a web application, um, and it's a custom build. Uh, so you have your own, you introduce your own kind of vulnerability, so to speak. If you use WordPress, which is a very widely used CMS content management system out there, the vulnerabilities, because it's such a great community, are easily spot there is a whole community behind it to keep make, making sure that this cms is safe but let's say for instance you start from the bottom up you know from the first line of code you do everything yourself because with software you can create your own reality so to speak um then it's also fine that you have people pen testing your tool and there are two types of pen testing basically like um, you have the black box testing, and that means that um, I have no idea how to get into your application. Let's say, for instance, you have a server running inside a building, uh, and on the same network, there's a Wi-Fi access point, and you're standing in the street with your laptop. Try to hack the access point first, then see how the network is built up. Are there VLANs? Um, do you need certain user credentials to get into another segment, VLAN, virtual LAN? Uh, can I access the servers? Um, what can I do uh, to gain uh, either access or information from the servers? What kind of OS is running? What kind of version? Based on this, you can determine what kind of known, known vulnerabilities are out there. Uh, you can um, fire up a couple of tools. So this is black box testing. You don't know anything about the network. You don't know about the, the servers. You don't know how they're configured. You don't know if they're patched up to the latest version. So black box is really like this kind of scanning. You don't know nothing and you really have to figure it out for yourself. What you can also do, which is most effective, which a lot of companies will do, is white box testing. Because white box testing is basically we know what the vulnerabilities are. We know it. We can give them to you on a plate. Uh, and I want you to see how you can um, use this vulnerability to hack us. Right? So this is already giving you kind of a clear landscape of what you can do, what you can expect, and what to uh, exploit here. 
So that's very uh, good to keep in mind the difference between black box testing and white box testing. And why would you differentiate between the two? I think black box testing is really interesting uh, just to see that because this is a more of a uh, real world um, scenario basically when you have an outsider not really knowing a lot about you only your company and what you stand for and maybe you're motivated to yeah put it down or whatever it might be this is more of an accurate real world scenario with white box you already have some details again uh, about known or existing vulnerabilities the type of version numbers you're running what kind of software how many servers if your uh, network is segmented for instance so this is more you already have some insights and then you try to uh, um, uh, exploit those that being said penetration testing very important especially uh, in in these day this day and age um, a lot of people ask for this let's say for instance that you have a lot of data uh, medical data or you have uh, payment data that you leave in the hands of a uh, like an application like this, um, you want to make sure that the, the security is up to a certain degree. Um, if, for instance, you have a contract with that party and they collect very sensitive data, nowadays uh, it's very normal to ask for a management review, for instance, of a penetration test, just to see if that you're up to speed and that you take this kind of stuff uh, serious. Most of the time, engineers, they just want to uh, build great products. They uh, just want to uh, develop. Um, they think in functions and, and how it looks. The designers, they just do everything in their power to make sure that it's presented to you in a certain kind of way, that it's uh, appealing to you, that you spend enough uh, time on the website, for instance. Um, but security is always like this boring thing that nobody really wants to cover because... When I write a little bit more code, then I might introduce a vulnerability. So there are certain ways to just make sure that the code is secure, secure coding. Um, you have various tools scanning your own application for known vulnerabilities. It's all possible, but then, you know, when a vulnerability is found, who's going to fix it? But that's vulnerabilities and penetration testing is really using all the kind of resources that you have. So let's say, for instance, you're not even in the building, but there's a Wi-Fi access point. And maybe you hack that access point just to gain access to the network. Then maybe you go to the um, Active Directory, see how rights and, and stuff is just, you know, kind of divided. Maybe you create your own account with admin rights. Maybe with that admin account, you have access to a server somewhere in the cloud uh, where the data is. Maybe you can grant from there access to a database and then you see what type of database it has. Maybe the version number, maybe known vulnerabilities out there. You do your testing, your tools, you, you, you fire it away at the database until you get something. So it's really like hopping. First, you get access to the network. Then you grant yourself rights. Then you see where the data and all the stuff that's valuable to you is located. Uh, so it's like, it's not one-on-one. -on -one. It's not like when you use one tool, you gain access and that's it. No, it's, it, it doesn't work like that. You really need to explore, do reconnaissance, uh, maybe check the website, maybe even talk to people that are on the inside that don't even know with social engineering that you are a hacker. It's all about reconnaissance. Um, but actually what I just want to tell you guys, a guy who thinks like that and who can act like that is also worth a lot in your company. And then of course we talk about the white hat hackers. They can make sure that they test your services. If you have a web application, SaaS application, um, they see the potential security holes and they can give you advice on how to close them, how to make your application more secure. So these guys, you know, they 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 worth gold in their weight, basically. Um, so two things, like uh, just a penetration testing company that does multiple things, uh, detection, whatever, whatever, whatever. And here this hacker one thing, so if you're just a freelance ha hacker and you, uh, for instance, you're interested in WordPress because so many websites out there use it, 
uh, and there's a certain plugin that hasn't been updated for six months, maybe you have a good chance there are some vulnerabilities in the code, right? So those kind of people really like to, uh, to do the analysis and when they find a vulnerability, they report it, it's being verified by this kind of organization and they get paid or they get verified by the, the WordPress development team and they say, yeah, you're right, you're absolutely right. So you can earn money by hacking as well. But only white hat hackers get paid uh, because the black hat hackers, they will use this vulnerability for their own gain, so to speak. And the white hat hackers, they will use it to spread awareness, um, share knowledge about how to make it more secure. So that's a big distinction there. Um, yeah, that's just something I wanted to get off my mind real quick. Uh, I hope all you guys are going, doing good. Um, I promise to make some uh, Kelly Linux videos. Um, I will do that this year. So there's no time frame for me because I'm really busy at the moment with my job. Um, but it will happen this year. And Kelly Linux is a uh, free open distribution of uh, Linux that uh, includes a lot of hacking tools. So I really want to show you guys in the test lab how to use it, how to approach it, how to interpret what's going on the screen on the screen. And I want to be able to um, to explain to you very clearly what this kind of tool does. But that that takes me a lot of time to really dive into the tool to see what it's doing. But I do this more for my own benefit and then try to explain to you what it does. So if I know how to explain what it does, then I know I master the topic, but this takes time next to a full-time job. So bear with me, uh, but I hopefully there will be some interesting videos this year coming your way. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys one in the next video.